in the next series of videos I'm going to be showing how we could make this part here. This part was just designed to help hold some of the VEX um, parts together, specifically getting um, horizontal and vertical C-channel attached to one another. And it's worked well for us for arms and things like that for some of our um, custom VEX robots. And so um, this part is made out of aluminum um, tubing, specifically aluminum 6061. And the tubing is just um, two inch by three inch by eighth inch thick. And I'm planning on making two at a time out of um, some of this aluminum stock. So looking more closely at the part, um, there are four different sides that we'll be machining. So we'll have four different operations. But um, all of the operations are just still two-dimensional machining. You could envision drilling these holes and contouring out some specific features. And so we're going to be using two different tools. One is going to be a drill bit, and the other is going to be an end mill. And so I'm going to first walk through the setup and then walk through how to do each of the operations. If you look at um, kind of how we would orient the stock in the vise, um, here is act the actual part in the vise, but you could envision the, the longer piece of stock being in the vise here. Um, this would be the x-axis where my cursor is running back and forth, basically along the jaws of the vise. The y-axis would be in this direction, and then the z-axis will be um, perpendicular to this face. We're going to set the origin at this location here. And that's the typical thing that we do within our team um, and within the class. And that um, is a nice location to choose because it's against the back of the vise. And the back of the vise doesn't move. Only the front jaw moves back and forth. Additionally, if we put a stopper against the stock, um, that rests against this face, then when we orient the stock in different locations, the X location doesn't change. And so um, that really fixes our X and Y locations. The only thing we really have to worry about is if we have a rectangular piece of stock, our Z changes because when we rotate the part, um, since it's a rectangular piece, we're three inches above the base of the the vise versus two inches above where it is right now. So at this location here, um, the Z location, um, we'll let that be our origin, but realize it is only two inches above the base of the vise here. Hopefully, um, as I set up the first operation, it will make a little bit more sense. And as we go through um, each of the four operations, it, it should become more clear. So let's take a look at the part here um, in isolation. And the first thing that we want to do is go to the cam tab, which is already selected here. I'm going to go to setup. And the first thing that I want to do is choose the origin and choose the stock. And so um, I'm going to use, instead of a stock box point, I'm just going to use a model box point. And I'm going to zoom in and choose this location right there to be the origin. Now the axes are all mixed up. And so I'm going to go here under Model Orientation. Click Select Z Axis slash Plane and X Axis. The first thing I need to do is select the Z Axis. So I'm just going to select the surface of the piece and it will create the z-axis perpendicular to that. But now I need the x-axis to be along this line here. Right now we have the y-axis, and so we have that mixed up. So I'm going to select x-axis here, choose this line to make sure that the x-axis lies along this direction. Now the issue is we have the x-axis going the other way, and so we need to flip it so that we have our coordinate system that looks like this. 
Now, um, the stock is oversized here, and so I'm going to go to the stock tab right here. And I'm just going to, um, right now, choose a fixed size box. And the width is 2 inches. The depth is 3 inches, like it's already chosen. Um, and the height is 2. But I really want the width to be larger, maybe like four and a half inches. Um, that, since the di the distance of the part is two, I want the stock to be more than four inches if I'm making two, because I have to have a gap between them for the end mill to cut um, the two pieces apart. That will make more sense as we um, start getting a little further in the tutorial. But what I do want to do is move this part further. Um, to the left or I don't want it offset from the x-axis so here I'm just going to go offset from the positive x and I'm going to say the offset is 0 and it looks like I need to go offset from negative x sorry and we have our um, part right here so you can envision we would have one part here and then we would machine out another part over here Instead of putting another part in and selecting all the tool paths, we're just going to make a pattern later. So now that I have everything set up, I'm just going to hit OK.